Michael Katunas, you've been uh, in Dubai in the region for uh, two years. What have you learned? <laughs> Good afternoon, Alma. Um, the region is one of um, the most interesting areas of growth across the globe. Um, as Credit Suisse, we have been following the development for quite some time, uh, starting with our private banking practice and uh, then expanding to cover the entire um, area of services that we offer as a bank. Myself, I sit on the investment banking side and uh, covering sectors um, across the, the entire spectrum of the, the industry, including real estate. Um, initially, the region started predominantly as an exporter of capital. There is significant uh, funds being generated by the natural resources, which are then invested abroad to um, quite a variety of, of investments. As, as the markets develop, um, the region became, in addition to a source of capital, a use of capital. Given the growth that companies are experiencing, um, both the population growth but also the economic growth, we have seen um, international investors looking at the region as investment opportunity. So in addition to capital going out of the region, there's capital coming in the region. And the latest development, um, which we believe will continue and, and expand as a trend, is intra-regional uh, movements, i.e. Um, transactions, companies, acquisitions from one country in the region to uh, another country in the region. Uh, what, when, we, when we mention region, my remit starts from, from North Africa and extends uh, across the Middle East and the, uh, the Gulf area and the Levant area. Which of those uh, sections of your rather large territory are the most active at the moment? Um, there is action definitely in the Gulf. Um, lately there has been um, growth transactions and, and expected transactions out of uh, Saudi Arabia. Everybody is waiting that market to develop into the powerhouse on, on, of the region. But in the past, um, most of the activity has been out of the UAE, either Dubai or, or Abu Dhabi. There's been a lot of action out of Kuwait, uh, and Egypt has also been pretty, pretty active. And, and when I say active, I'm thinking both in terms of capital markets transactions, but also in terms of, of M&A activity. But you decided to, uh, the bank decided to make its headquarters for the entire MENA region in Dubai. Why was that? The bank has presence in, in uh, physical presence on the ground in Dubai, in Riyadh, Jeddah, Doha, and Cairo. The headquarters are, in, are indeed in Dubai, uh, based uh, very close to, to here in the DIFC. And that is a convenient location to, to, to base a, a large number of people in terms of transportation, accommodation, it's the easiest, uh, the easiest solution. Uh, and that was, here was one of our first uh, operations, so it made sense to expand from here. But we see increasingly more um, action and activity out of the regional offices because they are the people that are sitting next to the client, they are the ones uh, that uh, engage in a day-to-day -day dialogue, and as a result, uh, action is shifting from the hub in Dubai to uh, the people next to the clients, effectively. You talked about uh, exporting capital from here to other places, and we know that some of the world's largest sovereign wealth funds are from the UAE and Qatar, and so on. Um, do you see a greater tendency to invest within other countries? I mean, say, people from the UAE investing in... Uh, in, in uh, Morocco, investing in Egypt, uh, things of that sort? Um, the purpose of a sovereign wealth fund in, uh, is twofold. One is to diversify away from the original source of, of that wealth. Which is oil, as we know. Which is oil yeah. in this, in this country. Or but gas. at the same time, um, the, the aim is to generate uh, returns. And, and those returns and the diversification objective can be met with uh, a number of uh, investment alternatives. Some of them may be close to the region, some, some of them may be uh, in developed markets or uh, in, in other parts of the world. Um, in the activity in the past has been mostly outgoing capital to focus on uh, developed market companies uh, and investment into developed markets. That makes sense, made sense from a diversification perspective. 
today you can still find um, returns, significant returns out of the developed market that this, uh, this pool of liquidity can access. But at the same time, given the growth that emerging markets are experiencing, you can find a combination of diversification and returns through investments in emerging markets. So um, I would say that, that sovereign wealth funds today have a, a dual focus, both developed and uh, developing markets. Thank <laughs> you.